All right. Hello, everyone. Before we start on the draft, can we ask about Jack Quinn's injury? Yep. Yep. What happened? Well, it's uh, unfortunately it was an, is an injury that he um, happened while he was training, um, working on his explosiveness, and these things happen. It uh, it was tough news, obviously, to get for uh, Jack first of all, and you know, um, and us. He's a really important player in our lineup, but. You know, what I told Jack on the phone was that I know the character and the person he is, and I've also been um, assured by our doctors that this is something that he'll make a full recovery. He'll come back bigger, uh, better and stronger than ever. So it's adversity. It's a bump in the road for him, but the type of mindset he has, I have no no uh, worries about how he'll come out the other side of it, but certainly disappointing news. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, an injury that's going to be, uh, I, I don't you know, I like, I don't like to get exact into timelines, but this is, uh, you know, a significant recovery. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I think a lot about depth up and down your lineup. And, you know, there's going to be different times where during the season you have injuries and how do you work your way through that? Um, and this, you know, is one that, would go in the longer term so do you do something different yeah but I think for us it's trying to make sure that we are, are putting a team that's deep on the ice and fortunately we are um, especially you know up front so um, I don't know if it changes anything but for sure it's um, it's something we'll be thinking about over the next 48 hours and in evaluating I got to count. I got to count in my head. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is there's there's a pretty good history of, of this injury and the time that it takes. And uh, like I said, it's you know it's definitely and we're in definitely gonna be longer term. And we're also not gonna in any way, shape, or form put someone on the ice until it's a completely and fully healed. But you know, the first question that I asked our doctors, um, you know explain to me once once you get to the other side of this is there any adverse effects and you know the, the the key for me and for jack is that you know he'll come back he'll be stronger than ever it's just you have to let this injury get repaired and heal this is tougher because I mean, it's like two of the two years two two big injuries that have happened in training the hernia a couple of years ago and now this right is it just all freaky thing or is it uh, yeah i mean this yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think um, you look at every type of injury and you wonder and you think about it. I mean, I think this just falls into one of those, you know, I've heard of other people in have is having this injury that was, um, you know, pushing something or, you know what I mean? It wasn't. So I think this is just one of these freak things. Um, you know, he was training hard. He's sprinting and um, working on explosiveness, which is what we want him to be doing. So, uh, yeah, I think it just falls into the kind of freak freak thing and unfortunately for Jack he's had a couple tough injuries but um, he's young he's strong he'll, he'll be fine well that's something we'll we'll talk about it I don't think it changes uh, in the sense of I think I said a couple weeks ago to you guys, someone comes in and kicks the door open and just absolutely belongs on our team and is gonna help us win hockey games. We're gonna find a way to make room. So regardless of this situation or not, that's what we'd be open to. But I also wouldn't say that we would, we would now sit here and say, oh, we should fast track someone or you know, change, the, change the timeline on any of our prospects based on this, but we're open to it. Um, unfortunately, we've built that pipeline up where we feel that we have some exciting kids coming. So we'll just, it doesn't change in my mind, but we're open to the potential of that happening. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what's interesting? I mean, uh, I'll say exactly what I said before. Uh, I don't get obsessed with size um, and this was not in any way uh, planned that saying okay we're going with these big guys or we want really good competitive hockey players that we think are, are going to help us uh, be a great team and a lot of these kids um, 
that we identified also happened to be pretty big. Um, so that's just kind of the way it felt. But um, yeah, it helps. I mean, you look at some of the size of these kids and I felt really small when a couple of them came down to the table and I'm 6'1", so that's a good thing. Yeah, I thought maybe we just had one with that thunder. I thought something was gonna, something big was about to happen. Um, you know, I, I don't know, to be honest. I said last night, I probably just need to think about that question a little more, but what I will say, maybe the lack of trades wasn't because of lack of trying to make trades or lack of the phone ringing and activity. It just didn't kind of uh, happen the way it sometimes does. So I'm not really sure. Um, some of it could be even salary cap related and just where teams are and just not easy to do things. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I gotta, I gotta think about this one and then I promise you I'll give you a better answer. I just haven't processed it long enough yet. Okay. Say, say it again, like. Oh, you mean like moving forward? Yeah, I mean we had a lot of conversations um, over the past well, you know, six weeks I'd say that's been when this whole process starts. Um, some good conversations, some things that we're going to continue to talk about, um, you know, coming out of the out of this draft. And you know what you're always weighing is when you're talking about a trade, you're weighing cost acquisition and then potential, what it looks like from a contractual standpoint, how does it affect your roster moving forward, and then not just cost acquisition in that moment, but what could end up happening to your roster two, three, four years down the road. And then if you acquire a D that has maybe one year left on their contract, you're weighing all of that, and then the next contract if you retain the player. So that's the round and round that I've been having with our own staff internally um, and with every team in the league. I don't think there's a defenseman um, out there that I haven't been talking to teams about um, and we'll continue that. But um, like I said, I think uh, you know it's an area that we've identified we'd like to, to help our NHL roster improve. Um, just depth and the quality and, and also going back to how we started this with, with injuries happen, making sure that we can um, have depth to cover ourselves. So that's something we'll continue to focus on over the next uh, you know, few days here. Hey, come on. Color-coded, that's, uh, that's my secret, don't tell anyone. Um, it's a lot, I mean, I think um, that's why you have a really good staff though. Uh, I, I've learned in my time as general manager that um, delegating for certain things is one of the most critical parts of the job because you can't be everywhere all the time and, and, and focused um, in everything all at once. You have to be able to know what's going on across the board and every part of the organization um, and then make sure that you give direction to the people you're working with to say, hey, focus on that for me and come back to me and let's talk about it. So that's what we've done a lot over the last few weeks leading up to the draft. Now obviously we'll flip our focus here in the next couple of days on you know are there, are there teams and that we've had discussions with that we want to keep pushing um, or is there someone that we would want to target um, as we get into free agency hey Kevin uh, Gavin McCarthy went sorry go ahead yeah, it's fair, John. I think I think what what everybody everybody weighs and values um, roster construction differently, obviously. And what I guess part of w what you think about as a manager is um, whichever way you're going to uh, add to your team, there's 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 going to be some sort of cost acquisition or monetary or term, however that shakes out. So sometimes a trade, there's a fixed asset. This is this many years, exactly the dollars. A free agent, maybe you're going into it with the hopes of doing this, but if there's a bidding war, all of a sudden you're out of your comfort zone in term or dollars. So I don't know if it replaces, I just think it's where you put your priority and how you want to try to manage your roster. Um, you know, I, you guys know I'm a big believer in, in drafting. It's why, the, why this is so important to us, drafting and developing our players and retaining our players. But if we think there's someone on the free agent market here in the next few days as we get to July 1st that uh, makes sense, then we'll definitely target that. Hey, uh, Kevin, Gavin McCarthy had his injury earlier this year. How impressed were you with the way he battled back from that and finished the season well? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, there's no 
uh, secret that I've known Gavin a long time, and so I wasn't surprised. The character, the work ethic, uh, you know, it's a tough injury that he had and he went through, but to come back and then be able to get back and perform the way he did towards the end, you know, it speaks speaks to who he is as a person. So um, he's, he's got a great family. Uh, I mean, with this job, there's so many challenges and things that you, um, you know, keep you up at night. And I'll tell you, having him come down to the table and seeing the smile on his face and um, knowing the work that kid's put in over his, his uh, time to get to this spot is special. So, you know, I think we added a six foot two right shot defenseman that um, we think there's a lot of upside there and that's why we made the pick. You mentioned the other day the importance of drafting and developing at that position. I mean, how do you feel at the end of today that you, you've got, you've stocked your, your pride Yeah, I, I, really, I really feel good about, um, you know, the Sturback, I mean, just raw, and we think a huge upside potential, um, big and long, and um, just a, just a, to me, just scratching the surface of, of what he ultimately can be. Uh, he's going to Michigan State, and he's going to play for Jason Nightingale's brother, and, you know, they have a really nice weight room there, and uh, that, that'll be a good thing. So, you know, those are things you think about. Um, you, you feel way more comfortable in the development process when you have a prospect that you kind of understand exactly the next steps but um, there's a lot to like about that kid and obviously um, Gavin you know we just see we just see an upside ceiling when you can get someone um, right shot D six foot two to me is gonna just put all the work that you have to put in to play in this league and you, you know you can make that pick in the third round um, it was worth it and then obviously we got others today that we think there's characteristics that they, they were guys that we felt um, will continue to just put the work in to get better, you know, and um, you know, you guys know me well enough. That's one of the biggest things we look for. Well, I can tell you that it felt very, very similar to Yuri Kulik last year, and I'll explain why. Um, this was a guy that we had way up on our list. Um, we were desperately trying to move up last night to get him um, in the first round. We um, did everything we could do to, to move up in the second round to get him, and we got him where, where we got him, which is why it felt very similar to Yuri uh, Kulik last year. Um, this is a strong, powerful, um, he's got talent, skill, he can skate. I mean, this is a guy, and there's some rawness to him little bit of a late bloomer um, but the people around him have raved about him I thought it uh, the, the tournament at the end of the year the world's I mean just really really took a huge step so for us to get him in that spot and I'm sure there's 32 general managers saying that that man I can't believe this guy got him in that spot but this this to us feels very similar to the to the Kulik pick last year in terms of how it played out and where we had him on our list uh, we see both I mean it's hard to say I think you know, hopefully there, there's the chance that in the center, but um, we just see the, the, a downside of if he's a winger and a middle six forward, that's a big, strong kid that's just um, getting better every day. So that's pretty enticing. Yeah, I touched on it earlier. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, if you were here or not. Um, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, look, he he's a, such a good kid, and he's gonna put the work in to get back. Um, it's it's disappointing for Jack. I feel for him because I know. Um, I guess he's one of those kids that uh, when I think back to the, my first draft as general manager, um, he's pretty passionate about what he's gonna do in this league, and he still will. Um, he'll get past this, but. I think he's right on the cusp of taking a big step in his NHL career. So it's a setback for him, but but he'll be okay. The kid out of Kingston, he's a big kid. He's got some snarl to his game. Was it important to get a guy like that into the system? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you can add competitiveness, um, and as you get later in the draft, you know, you're talking about kids that um, they're they're finding their game. They have some strengths, weaknesses, but what are those strengths, and does it could it turn into something that uh, you can build around, you know, the base of their game. And he's one of those type of kids. Um, you know, on the goaltender, I'll say too, like, 
I think there's a, from what we kind of, the work we did, I um, think he's going to take a step next year, uh, you know, the, just where he's at and becoming a starting goalie, it looks like, and all that stuff. So, you know, I think where we got him, um, I, I'm really comfortable when it comes to goaltenders, um, trying to find someone in each draft if it makes sense. You know, I don't want to go just do it to do it, but he felt like a guy at the right time at the right place for us with the projection we have. So all in all, I think um, this is a draft that uh, is going to take time to play itself out, but I can tell you we have some uh, excited amateur scouts right now, and you know, and, I, and Frank uh, was just passionately talking about our seventh round pick, and um, when I hear passion, and I hear an amateur scout pounding the table, um, especially that someone that's in their territory. I, I trust it. And that's what we saw in this draft, which for me gives me a, a, a lot of excitement for sure. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Kevin.